This is YFM. This is YFM. Honorable, is it is it because the information around how to go about doing business and making real money isn't available to the youth or per your experience they don't they just don't want to listen um you know the perception unfortunately in this country i'll be blunt be be very blunt this perception that sikedro is there when we're growing up it mm -hmm. was there but the person who worsened the situation mm -hmm. i'll be blunt with you was ex-president rollins why so he made people lazy and over dependent on government because when he came he killed and collapsed successful Guinean businesses in this country allow the ordinary workers mm -hmm. like you and Edward Boating mm -hmm. your workers here Rollins will kill Edward Boating or let him run away from this country and allow the workers to run the business you don't know the thinking that went through yeah. for him to establish this radio station. So when it is given to you overnight, you won't be able to run it. <laughs> precisely. So they had mm. CDRs, PDCs, and they'll be singing. We not go sit down, make each test every day. No, no, Wallahi. Rollins created the impression that the owners of the businesses were cheating, were their, cheating workers. their workers. Wow. And they took over. And everything, he indoctrinated Ghanaians to a stand that everything was government. Government. So you see today that most of our people have become beggars. Mm -hmm. They are always depending on government mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. That is the remote cause of oh, what we are experiencing today. Wow. Everybody thinks government has to do everything. Mm -hmm. It is not true anywhere in the world. You can't get it. Anybody who depends solely on government will never succeed in life because what the government has he has she has to share it mm -hmm. to everybody so how much are you going to get and we have to actually contribute to the bigger amounts they are sharing precisely so now i come to the point. honestly i believe by the end of this interview a lot of people listening now especially the youth will actually come into terms with the fact that the reality is reality there's no secret yeah. anywhere you know the shortcut will land you into trouble. Honorable, the honest truth is that uh, I'm also a part of the youth. Many a times, as I said earlier, we, we hear of people who have made it, but the information around how they even got to the top is not in I'm going to, to share mine with you today. We are going deep, Honorable. Very, very deep. But let's go back to the main question, the first one. Um, where did Honorable grow up in Ghana? Yeah, I was born and bred at Asindumpim, Fusu Roman Catholic Hospital. Wow. Asin Fusu. Okay. In my rear village, the original is Asin Dumpim. Asin Dumpim. Yeah, just a kilometer. Now, it's part of Fusu. Because of urbanization and development, now it's part of Fusu. But it's developed. It's no longer a village. Oh, it's still a village compared to a... Okay, is that any... Is that part of the reasons why you still call yourself the village boy? Yeah. Uh, I'm just proud of where I'm coming from. Okay. I don't want to be... You know, some people... When they make it in life, they don't even want people to know nah. their past. I was born and bred in the village. When I share this story with you, it will motivate some youth to take their destiny into their into own hands. hands. So I'm not afraid to share my past with you. I was born and bred at Asindompe. At 1968, I was taken to Kumasi because my father was a teacher there. Okay. I went to school in Kumasi, Bantima Presby. I know about my parents. Yeah. yeah. Then from there, I went to Sujalai. That's why I actually went to school too. Hey, oh no, but I'm just okay. young court, young court, young okay. court, young court I went one. to Sujalai <laughs> from there to practice school. Okay. Then they brought me back to my village because I was a troublesome boy, always wow. fighting. <laughs> so my father couldn't take it. They brought me back to my village. So I completed mm -hmm. elementary school in my village at St. Dumpim. Okay. I went to Adsad College at the age of 16 because I completed SA7, what they call SA7, from 4. Which was quite young, right? Old. Old? Because my classmates got some of them were around 10, 11. Okay. Some of my classmates, I'm turning 60 next month. They are about 55, 55. 56. Okay. So, so you, you were like their big brother. Right. 
Okay. Okay. Right. Now, what kind of home did you grow up in? I, I see a lot of discipline in you whenever you speak. Um, you know. Yeah. What was the upbringing like at home? If you, if you know, my, I will tell you the two. Mm -hmm. There are three. I lived with my grandmother. Okay. Any time I was being bad in Kumasi and they shipped me back to my village, I stayed with my grandmother. Okay. What she did was that, you know, in the village, we were classmates, myself, Opon, Steven Yamiche, and Brukuma. We called something a nobwa, meaning Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. these young men or young boys will go and weed some bush to make a create a farm. Mm -hmm. So today is Ken on Saturday. The next Sunday is Brukuma. Then the two left. Steven Yamiche and Opon will be the following week. Okay. So by the time the farming season starts, we have our own farms. We have our own farms. At that tender age? Yes. And my grandmother will be doing everything because I go to school. She cannot cut these big trees. Exactly. I fell the big trees. So we will do that. Then she takes over. Again, when I was in Kumasi, I was staying with my father. My father didn't know how to train kids. He was a teacher, surprisingly. But every mistake with a slap, that is why I'm not afraid of anything. Wow. Every mistake. My father slap. never sat with me even to tell me why you shouldn't do this. One mistake, wham, wow. wham, wham. So it got to a point I was not even scared of anybody again. Your body created resistance for that. Then when I went to Adsadi College, mm -hmm. I moved to Accra because my mother has remarried. My stepfather, now he's at East Lego. My mother is passed. There, we were staying at Kokumlimli. Um, uh, multimedia. Challenge, challenge bookshop. Okay. The technical school Accra ATTC. Okay. Yeah, that's where we're staying. For exactly opposite uh, Isaac Osei's house, the parents. Mm -hmm. There, I wasn't a bad boy, but I like fighting. So anytime you hear people coming to my home, mm -hmm. it means I'm beating somebody. <laughs> but the difference between my stepfather and my father mm -hmm. is that. My stepfather who put me in his car. He's a soldier, a border, border guard. That is where they have the immigration okay. headquarters. When he comes back from work, then he'll take his car to do some taxi. I'll be sitting in front, and this man will be advising me. Wow. Don't do this, don't do that. I never had that from my real father. He wouldn't have time. A teacher only slaps. Booty, a lot of was things. it like that only at home or it was it was his it was his character well i think he's a hardcore guy too okay very hardcore guy i've seen him fight several times wow yeah with my <laughs> grandfather my grandfather was a chief that one is a long story <laughs> my grandfather didn't want him to marry my mother okay so that generated that has, something has else issues yes okay all right. But he was a hardcore guy. In fact, the teachers called him boxer. Okay. Yeah, he's a lefty. One mistake, boom. Ah. Even among his own teachers, he was, you know, those things. But I think that is not a good training. Mm -hmm. My son is here. I don't remember. I think I've lashed him once. <laughs> he's, uh, I've he's, never, he said once. Yeah, once. I've never. <laughs> You know, but I'm sure that one even came with you know some talks around. Oh you know, yes, I, I, had to I, mean, I like I like talking to my. Yeah. You know, it got to a point I didn't respect my father because he didn't give me anything. Mm -hmm. It was only beating and mm -hmm. you know. But I respect my stepfather to date. My mother is dead. The house is still there. Every month I take care of him mm -hmm. because of the way he taught me real life. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, you know. When my father thought I was a bad boy and I didn't listen, my stepfather thought I was a very good boy. He had 14 kids. Okay. And 
his cousin asked him he wants to do him a favor one of his children he wants to take to germany and my stepfather chose me out of the 14 out children. of his 14 kids rear ones the man chose me so you were not bad after all <laughs> yeah but you know the training that yeah, my father exactly. gave me though that's yeah. why you know i think uh, he wasn't a good father wow he didn't teach me you, you had a you had a very interesting childhood honorable i from what you said i now know where your interest in farming came from but now let's bring it back to now um farming isn't really a thing the youth are getting into it's it, it's it's not enticing i don't know who you has know, made it like that i don't know your time um, I was going to give you one, but I'll give you more if you have time. Honorable, we can do three hours. So <laughs> let me continue. On and the people listening have to get the upbringing, mm -hmm. how I started mm -hmm. life. So I decided college. When I came to stay in Accra, my father, my mother used to sell latokanshi on a small table between uh, Mr. Donko from Agogo and Mr. Jivon. Mm -hmm. In between them, two ladies they'll be facing each other auntie foster and my mother they'll put their tables together and sell then in the evening they'll pack everything in a box yeah. and go and put it in those shops so what i did that time was that my mother was selling what we call wick wick is a uh, what we put in the lantern so that you lay oh, yeah. the match Ahuma, Ahuma, why yeah it? blade and the blade they had two types tatra blue bino. blue <laughs> the nazi with the crocodile yeah. on it we have some pk chocolate so we create a board then we put a bit mm -hmm. on each then we'll be going around yes pk chocolate tatra nazi yes rob wow we're selling hawking on the street and it was a competition among the brothers mm -hmm. or siblings. And one guy always made more money than me, Opon. Now he's uh, a pastor. Pastor Opon. You know? Then I graduated into selling lead bars. Lead bars is what they use for guns, the okay. local guns. Okay. okay? Buckets, aluminum buckets. So in 1981, when I was going to sis form, there was a lady from his Equiapim half and a Nigerian, okay. married to a Nigerian. And they were bringing a lot of stuff. That time, Ghana, because of uh, Rollins and his coup and whatever happened, he handed over to the man. There were a lot of shortages. So I remember very well, NNSC, Nigeria National Supply Commission, Mark. Um, there are some they call it wire. When you want to trap an animal, okay, the animal. farms, mm -hmm. you know that's what they use. So yeah, so this woman will bring all these things. I'll sell, make money. Then they, so when I was going to sis for, I was rich. Myself, not my parents, not your parents, but through business, through business. So when I finished this form, my stepfather's cousin mm -hmm. asked, which of your children do you want me to help? And he said, take my son, Ken. That time, what his real children said was that, I don't know how to put it, I said, what to unsuno and now the Baha Ashim, meaning you take your intestines out and put leaves okay in your stomach means they were not in support of what was happening yeah meaning i was not mm -hmm. the real child and he took the stepchild instead of the real child but all the real children that i took them to america none of them has even come back to say that brother or sister let me also help you they could they didn't do it what it means is that if any of them had first gone gone that would have been the end of the family true true that's very true so if you want a real prophet my stepfather is a prophet he's the one yeah he's the one <laughs> he, he he's foresaw, the one foresight, yes yeah he foresaw yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. the future of my family 
does not come from my own children, mm -hmm. but my stepson. I'm sure he's, he's very proud of you now. Oh, yes. Me too, we are the Denmark. Honorable, so <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, your first opportunity out of Ghana was Germany. Yeah, Germany. How long did you stay there? Uh, I stayed there for 18 months. 18 months. And then I went to America. How did, how did you just move to America through that? 18 months. Yeah, I worked hard. And the lady that I was staying with, an elderly woman, mm -hmm. uh, she took me through a lot. You know, it was not easy to get a job. So I got a job at a restaurant. It's called Times Square on Holmes Hotel or whatever. And I'll start working at around 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. After that, 5 to 5. Then from 5 p.m., uh, 5 a.m., I'll drive to Promat and also do two hours. <laughs> so I'll finish about nine. Then I'll come home. I'll get home around 11. Sometimes in the train, I'll fall asleep mm -hmm. and even miss my station. I had to come back. When you sleep at 11, 2 p.m., the woman will call you. Kennedy. That's just three hours. Yes, Kennedy, when you go to America, you're going to go to school and work at the same time. You have to start from here. I have to clean the lady's house before I go to work at five. My brother, and when you get there, Germany, you work. So I have to work at the restaurant for 12 hours again and go back to Promax. Two, two hours. Yeah, two hours. You couldn't sleep. So I made money, and that's how I was able to Move go to, to the US. Yeah, America. And in fact, I'll be honest with you, the Germans, they are hardworking more than the Americans. They will really use you. So when I went to America, the second day, I got a job at Zaru Bakery. Okay. Which was not possible in Germany. In Germany. So it was a dream come true. I work at Zaru Bakery in the freezer. So when they make the doughs, they put it in the racks and put it in the freezer. In the freezer. Very cold. When it comes out, it's like a stone. Then they'll tore it again before they put it in the what oven. Mm -hmm. So I was there, and one day in my own building, I was coming out, and I met my senior, Baba Moro. He's in Kumasi. Okay. Coming out. Then he asked me, hey, what do I do here? And I'm so I live here. I said, what? I also live here. He was on the sixth floor, 5J, and I was 6H, 178th Street. So he said he works at a gas station. Mm -hmm. So he fixed me gas station as well. So I'll do the bakery 40 hours, and I'll come and do gas station. And listen, why there is no Sikadro anywhere? <laughs> My 40 hours, my permanent job is the bakery. Yeah. But those Ghanaians who have stayed in America for long, after work, all they know, most of them, entertainment. Mm -hmm. So weekends, they'll give their shift to me Are you going and go to parties, and then I will stay in and work. That's what I want my son to learn. Monday evening, I start from 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 6. Then by the time I finish checking the, the sales, it will be around 8. I have to start work at 12. So I'll go home, get some farina and some soup. Mm -hmm. Then straight to Zaro Bakery around Hans Point. That's where your official 40 hours begin. Yes. So I came to a point... I was doing 88 hours a week from the gas station. I start Monday, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That gives you 16 hours. Wednesday, 10 to 6. That gives you 24. Thursday, 
Okay, that gives you 32. Wow. Then you do Friday. Now listen. Friday, 10 to 6, gives you the 40 hours. Saturday, 24 hours. And Sunday, 24 hours. So I get 88 hours oh, straight. And you know, because if you make the slightest mistake you make, you die. They will shoot you. Yeah. America, you are dealing with money. This guy. Yeah. So they have bulletproof. You only slide the money here. Mm -hmm. A gun cannot even go. Exactly. Right. So Saturday, Sunday, I have curtains on the floor. This uh, the oil. Mm -hmm. I remove them. The ones that I'm selling, the coal, for whatever. So I will tear them apart and make it like a bed and sleep on it. Whilst you are sleeping, you are dozing, then somebody knocks. Knocks. Palm number five, $20. Your eyes are red. Wow. You are using the computer. But I'm sorry, but how old were you at this point? No, I was uh, in 1985. I was 25 years. And so you didn't fall sick through the season when no. at times? No. Your body just took this normal? Yeah. Because of the training from Germany, mm -hmm. it was easy for me. It was me. easy for you. Germany, I was washing plates. And my brother, if I put my hand in the hot water or after bath, you see these white things here. Mm -hmm. Now I've used shea butter, so you can That's see. Right. All these years in I Germany, yeah, I was washing plates. Just for 18 months, but till date, you if you are with me, yeah, after bath, you will see these white things here. So America was heaven with all these jobs. The thing is, you just went in for the jobs. So it wasn't a challenge for you because what you're saying would be a challenge for somebody else. The challenge would be that you wouldn't want to spend that number of hours. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, those we met with their green card and American passport, most of them were working in the hotels. Mm -hmm. They were making 240 250 dollars a week and the 88 hours i was making only 285 then the zaro bakery mm -hmm. the 40 hours my take home was 120 dollars but you see because i put in more hours i was making about three Quarters more than those with their green card and a passport because I was earning $400 a week. Those with their passports, American citizen and whatever, were making two fifty. dollars You were making way more than them. Yeah, because I put in more Work. hours. Mm. Then I have a friend here, also from Pong. He stays at Tachimota. And Baba Moro taught me how to drive. I didn't know how to drive until... You know, I ate 24, not like them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they have, you know. So Baba Moro taught me how to drive. I decided to drive a taxi. So I've saved money. I went to auction and bought Chevy Impala. Same scenario. If you make a mistake, you're going to die. So we have bulletproof, bulletproof yeah. in the car. So with insurance and everything, it came to three thousand dollars. I didn't have my green card, but I started working, mm -hmm. driving taxi in the Bronx. And listen, who says Sikadro and you can make it? You can make it. In seven months, I had eight taxis. From the first one you had bought. Yeah. Because every month, every day, I save hundred dollars. The seven days will give me seven hundred dollars, yeah. But I make more money in the weekends, mm -hmm. so I use that to pay my rent and food. But the weekend, you will still make more money. That if I save hundred weekends, I can make about one hundred eighty on Saturday night, another one eighty on Friday night, uh, Saturday, Saturday night. night yeah. 
and then Sunday, Sunday you know Monday. around a year come back home but maybe 120 130 so in a month I saved three thousand dollars then I'll go to auction I want him to listen my son is standing there he has to listen can he listen he has a lot of things on silver prata so I'll go there auction buy this car do the insurance with lawyer Mankwa, big brokerage, mm -hmm. do the partition and everything, then I'll give it to somebody to drive. You pay $40 a day. I don't want stories until this is where probably my father's style or whatever comes, comes in. in. Mm -hmm. If I give it to you, it's contract. Sunday evening, you bring my 280. The only time you give me excuse is when I take the car to workshop for maintenance. So regardless, they should still make the money. Yeah, you make my money. 280. And was this cool for them? Did they see you as oh, a Oh yeah, $40. That was cool. That, but look, because on my own, I save 100 Yeah. So if you have bought a car for you, out of the 100 you have 60 and have 40 If you are working, you can make the 60 out of time. Because I do Zaro Bakery a week, 120 and you are making sixty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And we are making sixty dollars a day. So it was very good money. And so I don't want any story. So with these eight taxis, I saved twenty-four thousand dollars. My stepfather was a border guard. He went on pension. Jubilee House, mm -hmm. or was uh, W.O.'s quarters that they were staying. They had to throw their things out. Because my stepfather didn't prepare. So they didn't have anywhere to stay. Then Azuma Nelson and his boss, Mr. Asa, they used to have Paramount Hotel on Achimota yeah. Road. Azuma came to fight. There was a shop, a liquor store, on 114 and Lengnos Avenue. It's called Fred Wines and Liquor. It was a Guinean who said that opened that shop. So most of the taxi drivers, when we are in Harlem and we are tired, we just go and park our car there. I went in there and I saw Azuma Nelson. Wow. That, that was your first time meeting him? Yeah. Okay. And the boss, Mr. Asa. Mm -hmm. So talking, I said, oh, say, I have money for my mother. They've thrown them out of their house. But I don't know how to get the money home. The man looked at me and my age, and I mentioned 24000 He was surprised. So I gave him $16,000. Mm -hmm. In 1988, Ambassadoria Enclave, when you go under the bridge, mm -hmm. you turn right, the first street, I'm telling you today, from that junction to the end, where you make a right to yeah. ANC more, I connected electricity on water. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, that in 1988, that is where Azuma Nelson's uh, manager bought the house for my parents. So and you actually gave them the money to sort them out? Yes, to okay. sort my parents. And you are so honest, mm -hmm. very sincere. Mm -hmm. Because he liked me, my age and that yeah. amount that I mentioned. Yeah. So when he bought the house, it was a boy's quarters. He got it for twenty-four thousand because I told him I've saved twenty-four thousand. Yeah. So when he got the house, then I quickly sent him the eight thousand. So my first house in Ghana here was April 17, 1988. 1988. Yes. <laughs> 1988. That was my first house. My second house was six two four Commonwealth Avenue. In 1989. How do you May. keep numbers? You My brother, forget them. <laughs> you've gone through it. You are yeah. not lying. Yeah. It's your experience. Mm -hmm. So he, it will come just like that. I get that. He didn't know that Jennifer Lopez was staying on the same lane with us. He didn't know. <laughs> well, he was young. <laughs> you know? You wish you had come earlier, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Impressive. You know, so 1989. Uh -huh. I bought the house before he was born. I remember when the bank was talking to me. 
they could tell that I have deep accent. So the lady asked me, are you an African? I said, yes. And we are paying $69,000 deposit. I said, yes. Yeah. And you are what? 28 years. I said, yes. I said, wow. What work do you do? I said, I'm a taxi driver. But honestly, that time, Reagan introduced this amnesty program. So I had the opportunity to work with lawyer Kwajua from a CUD. Okay. Now he's here at the Red Co. Bangalore number E1. He became my boss. That is where I make the I made the money. Regan's time, the amnesty time. Mm -hmm. So the drugs, the cicadro, everybody is talking about came from there. And our office was 3 East, 167 Street. 3 East, 167 and Jerome Avenue, then Edward Grant. Today, as I speak, is an African market. At this place. And you still own it? No, not me. Not you. At this place was in the middle. Okay. We were on the left. Okay. Then the travel agent. But today, the woman has all the three shops. Our office, her has, and the travel agent. All this happening, you had not clocked 30 years? No. Okay. No. When I was 30, I had 11 houses in Ghana. And all these through hard work. Yes. Any time, look, let me tell you, during the amnesty time, somebody who was working for a week, making $120 a week, mm -hmm. the amnesty time, I'm not exaggerating, I take home over $1,500 a day. A day. Yes. So my boss bought a house at Red Coke. No, I bought 1988, the first one, and 1989, where my parents are staying now, I, yeah. I bought it. On the same street, two houses on the Ambassadoria Enclave. One was 1988, April, and one was 1989. Then I bought Reco Bangalore number A5 in 1990. Okay. Then I went to Kaneshi and the rest. You know. So, when I made money, I will quickly come to Ghana, buy property, and go back. Because that time, I had my green card. That is how I fortified myself. So it has not been easy. And I'm sharing this experience with you for people to know that life is not going to be easy. My brother, I've lost almost everything twice. Twice. To what? One. When you... You know Hollywood? Yes. The filling stations and all those properties are built. It. I had a fight with my sister because the way she was managing the place, I didn't like it. She actually bought the whole land and I did the construction of the it. buildings. I had to lose everything because that time she was using Rollins. As Rollins' girlfriend was my sister's best friend. <laughs> so they were using Rollins to intimidate me. I said, hell no. Me, the way I've struggled in America to get it. And first, she didn't even go. This is me. your biological sister? Yes. One mother, one father. Wow. Don't do business with even okay. your mother. <laughs> do your own business. Get her money to eat. Yes. Don't do any business with in any family member. At all. Do your own thing. So, I mean, whatever I'm doing for them, I'm sharing it. Yes. This is yours. Mm -hmm. You mess up, God knows I've done You're my You're not part. handling it for me. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah, it's yours. <laughs> but to go and do business with a family member, I'm afraid, no, don't do it. Even Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ tells you he knows Ghana, don't trust Jesus Christ again because he's been corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who knows Ghana has been corrupted. So don't trust. Uh -huh. Use your business principles to protect your investment. Family or no family. Family or no family. Use your aid to protect your investment. If not, who don't have a good And you know, the sad thing is that you, the very person that is feeding, uh, you know, the whole family will turn against you. Because mm -hmm. they think what you have should be theirs. Yeah. 
the, the sense of entitlement we have out here is, is unbearable. And it's, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So it has not been easy. Look, I lost the first one. Mm -hmm. And listen to me. First one that I lost was in 1992. Me? I was in MPP. We formed MPP in 1990 at uh, Brooklyn, New York. Nana Boache's house. Myself, no, my boss, Boache Jakun, Doctor, um, he's now the counselor in UN, New York. Doctor Mwaku, mm -hmm. Professor Emeritus Mwaku. He became MP after JB. Mm -hmm. Then JB mm -hmm. came back. Yeah, that man, Kwabe Usu. Ghana Maritime, he became the MPP yeah. first chairman, and Boachi was the general secretary. So in 1992, we were so sure Ghanaians were prepared for change. So we came to support Dr. Dubuai with Dr. Preku, and that's where I got to know Dr. Preku and the rest. And we lost the election. When we lost the election, I stayed here for eight months. When I went back, my office had been taken over and given to the lady. Well, that's how come she used the African market. And you see, when why I always react strongly when somebody says I'm a drug dealer? It's because of that. When I lost everything in 1992, I was going through divorce with his mother. I had another nice girl here. She left me because the money was not wasn't coming. coming anymore. Yeah. Now when she sees me, you see uh, this guy, you day. You <laughs> see the kind of cars I use. Then she 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 I, realizes I a mistake. <laughs> yeah. You know, I went back and listen. Uh, Professor Dubuahin was so sure he was going to win. So in his house at airport, all this while I had not gone to university. I was a sus former, yeah. making money. But you know, I wish the man had lived to see. I didn't know the statement he made. I thought he offended me, but he saw something in me. Listen to me. When he was arranging his ministerial positions, it got to me and he tapped me here. Young man, you're going to be a strong businessman. I didn't get it. I thought, oh, maybe because I've not been to college. Yeah. I've not gone to mm -hmm. college. That is why he's saying that. Not knowing he saw something in me. So when we lost the election, I said, I said ah, school dear, me answer me Kobe. So that was what motivated you to go back to school? Yeah, to go back to school in 1993. Oh, Fordham University. New York. Yeah, in the Bronx. But even that three years, we share what I would. And when Reagan, uh, uh, Clinton, Clinton, yeah, Clinton also came with U.S. lottery, and I was the first person. So to that was introduce, when it started. That was when it started. Yeah, okay. Clinton's time. I was the first person to introduce this program here. My office was at Zaro Zaglo House mm -hmm. at the Braca. And look, the kind of money I made that time, that is when I came back, when after getting broke with the Dubois election, you know, I started all over again. I was using my last Lincoln. Her mother has also left the place. My house, the 624 Commonwealth Avenue was taken by the bank. I was left with only my Lincoln Navigator. No, Lincoln Town Car. That was the time I should have done drugs yeah. by my brother. You went back. I went home. back yeah. to drive taxi. That's when I took them. They had stayed with, when there was a problem with the mother and myself, they, they came to Ghana. So I took them back. And now, I, my so wife did very well. Within a short period, you had moved from owning taxis to driving the taxis yourself. Yes. Wow. Yes. So when, when, Things like this happen to you, and he said, You are going to consult uh, whoever. <laughs> You're making a mistake. Life is never going to be smooth. 
If not, we will all behave like animals. Mm -hmm. If life is so smooth, we don't have challenges on our way to success, then we will behave like animals. There are definitely going to be challenges, but you have to rise to the occasion. I say strike hard when the iron is hot. You, don't ju you just don't back off when the iron is hot. You'll be defeated completely. Exactly. When it dries, it will deform. But when you strike it hard, you put it into the shape you want it. Right. So that when it dries, it goes into the shape you want. Oh, no, but let's talk about school. When you decided to go back to school in America, how was the experience like? Which course did you, did you study? Economics. What economics. I also did economics in uni. You see, I've, I've, seen, I've seen my <laughs> economics. Yeah, most of I was in economics in yet. I also hey, did economics. Hey, the best that you can do. I'm on TRC. No, 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 very, very my, my good. life in a different way. Oh, yeah, my in a different perspective. How was it? Um, uh, uh, you're you know, in, let me tell it you. It wasn't your first time in America, though. So no. How was it like? You know, I'm not saying everybody should waste his good time before going to school as a mature day. You see, literature, Macbeth. Yeah. Honorable Alex Markin was shocked when all those years that I was doing Macbeth, I could recite Still it just recited. like that. Me, every baba. It's like I didn't even understand what I was reading. Mm. But in the Fordham University, I was a mature student. I knew what I was doing. My GPA, none of my kids, I'm, I think one of them will beat me, but not yet. So okay. long as she has not. <laughs> my GPA was 3.85 throughout as a mature, mature student. student. When I was there, my professor, he was Iranian. He introduced me to Solomon and Solomon. Mm -hmm. Financially, now it's called Smith Bank. Because I was good in economics, you know, those things. Now, of course, I was matured. I've made money, lost it, started driving taxi again. And my new wife, which is still my wife, Stella Wilson, did marvelously well. I brought the two kids. She took them as hers. And she really supported me. So I was able to come back again. I introduced the US lottery that was introduced by Clinton to Ghana. And you were the first person that brought it here. Yeah. In t yeah, you know, that was your cause. You have to be real quiet. You will find out. <laughs> and that time, when I finished the program, I had said to myself, I didn't know how it was going to happen. Uh -huh. I had said to myself that at, at age 35, I'll be a, a millionaire. Did it happen? Oh, yes. No, I said age 40. Age 40. Age 40. I'll be a millionaire. September 30th, 1996, I had $1,145,000. Bam. Which was way before the age you even said. Right. At wow. a great bank. Dr. Wow. Crunchy was the one who was handling my money for me. From the lottery. <laughs> you made that much? Yes. Because I took 567 people to America that year in 1996. So when we finished the program, 30th, I checked my bank account. I called all the workers, those who helped me. Gave Sorted everybody twenty thousand dollars and pop champagne. That now I can say that I'm a millionaire. And and <laughs> so you listen again. I lost that money too. How? That is when I started working with my sister. We set up this Hollywood mm. with shops here and there, and boom. After this, she wanted to take everything for herself. I had to fight. One day, Irene Mercado, she's now the, the what's the title they given? The Director General for Common Fund. She was a student. They were the one I was arrested and taken to Legon Police Station. She was the one who was bringing me food. People don't know how I have struggled how to rough get it's been, yeah. Yeah. And my brother. Village boy like me, I've made million dollars and I see it rare that my sister who is not educated is outwitting me. Wants to take it. I had to fight. I'll get to Hollywood and the police will arrest me 
on your own property. Yes. Yes. I had to fight. So it was not easy. All this, I left. So what I had to do to start again was that when you make money, mm -hmm. you should have secured investment. And the secure investment is properties. Properties will not make you rich, rich, rich because you wait for rent to come. You don't do the business with the exactly. money mm -hmm. because it's stuck. But it's a security. Anytime the money that you are doing business with, you lose it, you can go back. You have a fallback. Mm -hmm. My brother, to start life again, fortunately for me, I had 11 houses that time. That time. So I had to sell the strategic ones in a good location mm -hmm. to start life all over again. I lost Tesano Airport, you know, all those things. I lost it. And started life and okay. in between that was your education because i, that I stopped uh -huh. yeah, i didn't to, finish yes i wanted to get to that um fordham university in 1996 when i made that money i deposited it a great bank, bank and i was still going to school but what was happening was that the workers when we started the 97 one mm -hmm. the workers use my company receipts to take people's money that i'm going to do the program mm -hmm. i'll get the green card for them do the applications and everything but i was in school i was going to come back when they are going to do it again no when they are going to the interview itself okay i'll be here to guide what to do but filling the forms my brother they use my company receipts to take the money and never did anything for them and all these people were falling back to you because it was your receipt yes so i had to come back and had to pay everybody out of the money you had made with them yes had to pay everybody you see if i had not paid everybody do you think today mm -hmm. i will get more even to talk because you would have been labeled as a criminal back then right but a lot of friends who were doing that they had legal background and they used technicalities to refuse to pay mm -hmm. the people and they, they never had peace mm -hmm. but i paid everybody i paid i refunded their money so long as you have my receipt i have authorized them to take it mm -hmm. so it's if i don't see it it is assumed that you have given yeah. the money to me and i had to pay that is honesty was it true that you deferred your course in the university just so you can come back and do business with the money? You, at the point you said, okay, yes. why should I have this money? Um, let me give you why I stopped. Was that when my professor introduced me to this Solomon and Solomon, mm -hmm. myself, there's one guy here now he's dead, Atta. Then a Jamaican in Spanish. We're four students that the professor recommended Atta got a job with at and t okay and i got solomon and solomon that time even in school they were giving me eighty nine thousand mm. dollars so after the interview congratulations then i went home and asked my wife ah, you mean so all this school that i'm going i'm going to get eighty nine thousand and this 89,000 is not net. Mm -hmm. Uncle Sam is also going to take this. So I told you, look, I cannot let this money go like that mm -hmm. with what the people are doing. Now, if I have one billion, one around forty-five thousand dollars in my account, why should I stay here and take 89,000 minus Uncle Sam? No, I'm going to work with it. Mm -hmm. I can ask my wife. She was so disappointed because the family she comes from, they are all highly educated, R.P. Bafu's family. So oh, finish and go. I said, if I stay here one year, mm -hmm. I'll go to jail. True. If I stay here one year and the people continue to take people's money and don't deliver, 
I will go to jail. Go to jail. I've lost my first day. This one, I can't let it go. So I came back. That is how come I didn't finish. But it worth it. I said to myself, I said to my wife, don't worry. I'm going to employ PADs, mm -hmm. masters, graduates to work for me. And I have done exactly that. Wow. Honorable, that is the genesis of your business and, you know, the creation of your wealth. But at what point did you decide to get into politics full time? I was still in politics yeah, because in, yeah. I lost I lost money exactly. at the Dubuahin's time mm -hmm. in 1992. It, it was my boss mm -hmm. who introduced me. He's a very good man, great man. A lawyer called you from a city. Okay. If I had told him I was coming here, he would have tuned you. <laughs> he really likes me. You know, okay. uh, it's not easy to work with somebody, and he will love you to death. Yeah. He's sick now, but the family tells me every That's blessed it. day he's listening to a man to see if I'll come yes. or not. <laughs> so it's not it's not easy to have a boss like that. Exactly. And I think I also respected him and did the right thing and all those things. You know. So. I promised myself that I will not lose this money. So I came back and I lost every contact. The lady who was helping me there, they didn't let her go back because she made a mistake. I bought, I bought golf, GT whatever for her. I set up baby's boutique for her. And the way she was dressing, envious, and but they were temporary. They were only there for the lottery program. Exactly. So it's like seasonal. Right. Yeah. You go and come back, mm -hmm. and you know, but they didn't call her again. Life still goes on. So I started hustling left and right, you know. And that time, even today, one million dollars is still a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it is not only the one million dollars, one one million one hundred forty-five thousand dollars that was in the account. So my sister went to a Greek bank for a loan. Doctor Crunchy was also from Asin. Okay. So talking to her, says, "Oh, she mentioned my brother is this," and I was so oh, okay. So your brother is doing very well. This, this, this. And my mother convinced me to help my sister get the loan. First, the Dr. Crunchy said he was not going to give her the loan because when her appearance, she had gold all over. And all you could hear, grand, 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 when she's walking. Now she's thrown everything away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so gold uh -huh. all over. So Dr. Crunchy said, mm -mm. no, I, I, trust you. I, I don't trust yeah. you. I don't think you can pay. So I had to guarantee for her. Okay. It got to a point where she she realized the interest was so high. So, oh, why don't you take shares in this? This is how it all started. And I'm telling you, in 1997, I pumped in $400,000 only for me to see that I entered the premises, the business was doing well, mm -hmm. But I didn't have time to manage. She was the one managing it. She goes there and dip her hands into the money mm -hmm. and go away without even accounting for it. So the gas attendants also, they all bought cars. One yeah, day... Madam is doing it, so we are all doing Yeah, one day I went there to check. There was no money mm -hmm. and there was no fuel in the tank. Where did it go? That is when I started. I said, uh, 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 no, this can't happen. This kind of management. It won't happen. Then it started. I did this, I did that. Mm. Uh, uh, what I went through, my brother, your mother, let her stay there and give her money to drop. Don't involve them. No. And I'm sure when things hit the south, they would definitely involve family members. Yeah, so over quite at the long run. Ah, they say I had to pull a gun wow. at the court. The lawyer, <laughs> he met me in parliament. He said, Ah, this guy is a strong guy. <laughs> There's a designer called Dominion. Okay. And I was getting those shirts from Pachester, a wholesale. I'm the one who brings the things from America. So if you are wearing my shirt, I know. 
<laughs> the guy, the lawyer was wearing my shirt at the court. I said, you, a lawyer, that you solicit favors from your clients. Mm -hmm. This shirt is for me. The and I held it. I said, look here, Dominion. Mm -hmm. They're cheap. I pulled a gun. I said, I'll blow your head. Think I'm stupid. I've gone through that. And now you think this illiterate can let me lose everything? Hell no. I'll die here. Fortunately, the judge knew Dr. Crunchy. Mm -hmm. They adjourned the case. And the judge, uh, Akoto Bamfu, mm -hmm. her husband had died. And the uh, one year anniversary, she came to our place for furniture mm -hmm. to go and do, you know, some few gathering. Then Dr. Crunchy told her that, oh, those are my nephew and niece. Say, eh. Then the fight that they are fighting. So the Dr. Crunchy took the judge through everything. How I gave the money and exactly. everything to it. So the next time we went to court, good. Why I didn't like my mother, and I'll tell you a secret today. I had vow. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you today, me say, don't do business with any family mm -hmm. member. I had vow, it's only today that I'm coming public. I had vowed that if my stepfather had died before my mother, I would have thrown my mother out of my house. Because my mother, I gave her money to make a deposit, bungalow number A5. She went to court and testified that the house is for my mother, hey, my sister. Nah. I swear to God. My stepfather went there said, ah, mommy judge, me hire a boy. Ben manu ne disi kanu manu. Na ma time no abanyame, my stepfather yini chair me mommy. Ba na me mommy fee say, my stepfather would die before her. But she died before my stepfather. Na ma plan say come to. Ko kan ka betu no. Me tu no akotena me sister nchen because you know, osene the auntie. Yeah, osene the auntie ko. But it didn't work that way. I'm telling you. I've been very bitter with family business. So me, I stay away. And you can take a cue from me. Mm -hmm. It has not been easy. It has not been easy. So when people see you, they don't want to work because of politics. They talk trash. Mm -hmm. He's a drug dealer. He's mm -hmm. this. I will not keep quiet. Because you know what you've been through. Yes. I will not keep quiet. I will fight back. That is my style. I'm sharing all this with you, life experiences mm -hmm. for the youth that are coming up to know that you're not going to have a smooth sail. Mm -hmm. There will be ups and downs. When you fall, you rise. If you fall and you stay there, that is the end of you. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you how to make money. Let's go into that. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. <laughs> you see, especially the workers here, I know your income mm -hmm. is not that huge. But you should still save money. One, if you are not married, you should be able to save 70% of your income. How you can do that is that you can share, you can rent a place and share with a friend. So that if you are supposed to pay 600, you pay 300. You can even bring a third person. So that if you have to pay 600, you pay 200. What it means is that if you are two, you will save 300. Exactly. If we are three, you will save 400. And it becomes a big savings. Typical example of what I'm saying is today. And it's all over the world. When you look at America, you realize the way about 30 million people are filed for unemployment. It means they never saved. They were doing hand to mouth. If you don't save, if you don't have the ability to save, you will never be successful. Savings, the power of savings is key to success. But the first cardinal principle 
For anybody to be successful is honesty. There are a lot of people. Let me give you one example. I have a Chinese woman here. She has given credit to some Opera Square traders. Mm -hmm. Plumbing equipment and all those things. St lights. When she is going for the money, they give excuses. I, she supplied me goods worth $11 million. And I've paid $9 million. So anytime I tell her, Wela, I need this, she has confidence in me that as for Ken, he will pay. Yeah. That's richness. The financial trust is there. And it comes from honesty. Yeah, and that is richness. Mm. People who take her goose and do not pay cannot go back to her. Mm. As simple as that. So she gives me this credit and I honor any time they pay me, I honor. Sometimes I have to give everything to her because she is also be stressing. Yes. Of course, I have other businesses, so I'll eat. Then I give everything to her. Wait for another payment. That is honesty. Mm -hmm. So whatever I tell her, I need this, immediately she will organize it because she knows I'm going, You're to, going to pay. Honor your word. Honesty brings confidence. Mm. Then I gave you an example of working 100 and 88 hours plus 40 hours, which is 128 a week. If you use 40 hours to make $250 and go and drink your call, 45 for Budweiser, that was the favorite drinks back then. Back then. Budweiser mm -hmm. and call 45. Then if you want to get drunk, they call it Old English. It's a, it's a beer, but mm -hmm. the alcohol content was a bit high. Old English. <laughs> you see, the time that you are spending to drink call 45, I'm at the gas station working. Mm -hmm. So hard work. So if you want to make it in life, should be hard working, honesty, mm -hmm. and savings. Mm -hmm. Right now, no. <laughs> hard work in a bit now as a youth and I quite issue can crap but you see let me tell you let me give you an example the problem of the youth today is that they think they finished university mm -hmm. they've completed university I'm a graduate so this job I can't do it why is it that I had 11 houses but I went back to drive taxi and this was not even a regular taxi it was from um co-op city to Bay Chester Co-op city, one one dollar 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 dollar. Wow, wow. Yeah. Why? You have to adjust to every situation so that you can come back. But with your ego saying that you're a graduate, you don't want to do anything. My boy comes degree in it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, from here I'm going to my site. One day I got there, and my manager, he knows me very well. He was interacting with a lady who had come there with ice cream cake or some drinks to sell to the workers on site. Talking to her, the girl said she's a graduate. She did communication or something, whatever. Then I said, oh, graduate? And we are doing it. I said, yes, but I don't have a job. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to do. So I bring the food here to sell and I make something. I said, ah. This story is what my boss will want to hear. So wait, he's coming. I got there. I saw the lady with water and some drinks mm -hmm. selling to the workers. So I asked her, are you a graduate? Say yes. I said, go and bring your certificate. Kenneth, has she started working? Wow, two months already. Yeah. I said, wow. You see, she's not lazy. Mm -hmm. She's not waiting for mana or government to come and feed her. I was encouraged and touched by a graduate selling ice kinky to make a living. So point is, you did not employ her because of her certificate, but you employed her because of her zeal and hard work. In yes. Her, you know. Okay. For her to have been a graduate and come so low yeah. 
to sell means she's a serious minded person. It's a go getter. Right. So I said, well, if you live in Tema, now what I can do for you is Ken City, is in Accra. He said, say, I'll do it. I said, okay. So I call Kenneth, they should train her, and now she's you've heard it too yourself much. that she started working two months ago. Honestly, I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm touched. I'm picking all these things myself because when it's youth in America, home, won't be. Yeah. And these are things that people won't tell you. Or because seminar, you go and pay, and then they will just uh, ruffleize it, and they yeah. won't go honest Look, with that. Let me tell you. A graduate, you come here. Oh, the only one can create good table. So, you see, the level of education you have will make you think differently. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk of risk, we will come to that. Okay. Some people selling here may not even know the risk. They wouldn't know the integrity. You have to be honest. You have to be sincere. These and that. You would have heard it in person somewhere along the line in your education. Mm -hmm. So if you begin to sell something, and for a graduate to lower himself or herself to go and sell something, you don't want to fail. Mm -mm. That is where the success comes from. You don't want to fail. Mm -hmm. And most of them would not fail because they didn't stay home and expect manna to come from yeah. heaven. They abandon their ego, their certificate, and try to do something. Those people will definitely Make succeed it. in life. Wow. Definitely. For him to abandon his certificate, ego, to go so low to start life, they will make it. So the youth. Now, how much? Sometimes it's very difficult to get capital. I know. Very difficult to get capital, but you can start small. You can start small and build. Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. From from one to upper six, I had oh girlfriend is they were just only in name. Me, my, my success and my determination came from women who dumped me. It challenged me. I always turn negatives to be positive. Hmm. So the youth, turn your negatives to be positive. positives. The woman, two of them, they dog me because Charlie poverty. Oh, but Mr. Father, fee on one. The furniture, if you read Chinua Chibi, you say me and my wife. Yes. The single chairs. One of them, when she came, I had forgotten that the chair was broken and they just put it there. So she sat on it and she was exposed. But mm only -hmm. So she felt I deliberately did that. How can I deliberately do that? I went to her house to apologize. And she never agreed. I said to myself, one day I will be somebody. Wow. I'm getting a lot of messages on our WhatsApp. Let me just take a brief moment to say hi to a few people. Uh, this one in here says, my first time listening to Honorable Kennedy. A Japan. People are not thinking at all in life. You need to hustle to get to the top. Uh, this one didn't add his name. Thank you, Honorable Kennedy at Japan, for this info about life. I'm really inspired and proud to have you as a leader in Ghana. Keep telling us the truth, but nothing uh, nothing else but the truth. Obviously, that's what he's going to uh, give us. Honorable, so I watched um, a documentary about you, I think this was about two, three years ago, and it was a day in your life. I think they visited your house in your constituency. Okay. And I was amazed to see the number of people who queue up at your doorstep every morning to ask for help. What moves you to help all these people? And like what do you look out for before you even yeah. help someone? Why I do that is that I try to give everybody equal opportunity, which mm. I didn't get. Mm. And I, I do that because when we were in Adesade College, one, I had a nickname, Kwame a Japan, marriage. Mm -hmm. In the class, I was tall, you could tell from my height. Yeah, so yeah. I was always behind there. When a teacher comes to the class and asks, yes, the gentleman back there, even if I know the answer, when I raise my hands, they will all turn. Kwame a Japan, a fumo, a fumo. Yeah. Wow. Kwame a Japan, a fumo, a fumo. You know, 
from Asim Fosu to Adisadu College, a champion time in 1976. It's just 45 minutes today from Fosu to Cape Coast. Yeah. It took us over four hours. When I got to Adisadu College, my hair, my eyes, yeah, everything true. was brown. You could tell from the trunk and everything is acquired. When you raise your hands to answer question, why me Japan? I no bluff you, Cheme. You see, yeah, so but because I had the opportunity to go to school and met people, mm -hmm. you see how my life has changed. So I decide to help people because. I think if they are given opportunity, mm -hmm. some will do far better than me. Exactly. And I'm proud to tell you today, Akufuad, President Akufuado's time, I have over a thousand jobs for my small constituency because I have over a thousand graduates. Mm -hmm. I decided to educate the people. So the queue for their school fees. Mm -hmm. I also help the health people that are, you know, those things. And trust me, if I tell you poor people that have passed through my hands and how they are doing well today, yeah. if I had not given them that opportunity, they would have wasted their talent. Yes. By now, Kaubonza, we call Wabusa, but go and see these guys. And all Girls. these people also give opportunities to other people as well. Well, you know, the problem, the difference between me and them. most of them will be that they are afraid to share their past. Mm. One boy, one boy, very handsome boy, very, very intelligent. I took him to Adsado College. He did November, second year in Adsado College and got seven A's and a B. So he went to Legon. So when his mates were in third year SS3, he was in Legon first year. And he still got first class. He works at Fidelity Bank. And I've tied my account because my rent from these big companies comes in dollars. Mm -hmm. The Fidelity Bank, sometimes if I don't have CDs in my account and I sign a check, they look at the dollar in my account and pay. Okay. So I was specific that the lady should take it to this branch, mm -hmm. but she didn't. She took it to this boy's branch. So when he went there, she went there, I said, oh, then let me talk to the manager, I, whatever, he's my nephew. I swear to God, the boy refused to talk to him. No matter his brains, he will never get one hundred of what I have. I swear to God, what the boy, reason? God will punish that boy. Onya bida. Your friend AJ Randolph. AJ Randolph. And you to see you experience all these, but you still but keep doing it. Because Ebi Munso, there's one boy. Ofri Kushia. Nana Prani Sam Jonah Krum. Okay. And also, me quite decided to call it, but they have never failed me. Any a sing boy, I'm the one who decided to call it. Where has gone to university? Mm -hmm. Boy, no. When I was going round, they were laughing at us. Or the a sing kushia wenya he she. Or the a sing dumpi wenya he she. So I asked my driver, what is she? Meaning zero percent. Yeah, yeah. So I went to kushia. Said, ah, where Nanapra comes from? Where some Jonah comes from? zero percent so i assure them that anybody who studies and get good results i will take care That's of them this boy the following year he got eight i could get eight mm -hmm. from that village then i took him to the college me say this boy went to kivas oh yeah kivas no the u.s lottery wow a and, woman, a double double. and went to america mm. What the boy does is that every Christmas he's in America, he will send his family to bring hampers to me. He went to stay in my house and build himself up 
and there were some computational, some big EB, what you say. But that boy, Coco Selam, ni ba. Oh no, when you are here. Hey, that year, me catch on. There is a northerner, and also only two boys in Amdum Kwad Saddle College, Fuseni, or a medical doctor. Omo family, me name so me NDC MPP. One of the guys with me, AMPP, and an sister pan and a bunny for seeing you. Me a one number catch him so me call ma. I should give the guy bail for seeing it. Why? Why? Because I went to the Muslim community in my area and they were asking me what I've done. I'm so at least I picked this boy through at the Saddle College University and now he's a medical doctor. The mother is an NDC. The mother said. I should never mention the son's name anywhere that I took care of him. Mm. So the brother beat her up. So you are very ungrateful. Very ungrateful. That is how I got to know when I went to the police station. Mm -hmm. Then he told me the story. So, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. <laughs> Confucius, mm -hmm. A Jay Randolph, listen carefully. Only for saying it. I say, if a man saves your life, you are indebted to him for the rest of your life. I sit here and curse that boy today. Very brilliant boy. Now, yes, I'm a member of Harvard. And now, one of our guys, Nanayao, or yeah, Juma of Fidelity, and no, Opochi. Oh, yeah, Juma of Ken City. That's how I was bringing the guy up. He's, he doesn't want anybody to hear his past. He will never succeed with all the brains. I tell Randolph, I tell you today, you will come one day and kneel before me, even if I'm dead on my grave. Me say, these two boys, me know, I took them to my house at West Legon and taught them how to use fork and knife. Because if you don't do it and you go to Adesado College, yeah, best know. you are doomed. Teaching them. And you didn't have this opportunity. No. <laughs> but that is the reward I got out mm. of it. If I, they were the first two I tried, mm. if I had looked at what they did, I wouldn't have helped anybody. And where I am today, none of them can help me. But there are different kinds of help. Mm -hmm. It may come to a point that with all your money, you cannot even get up. Mm -hmm. One of the boys will be there to save you. Yeah. What do you say? Okay. So I continue to do I don't... If you expect favors from kindness, you do, then you always be bitter. You'll be disappointed. Yes. So me, I just help people. Whether you have ah, one boy during PSFM time, the mother brought him to me. So oh, my son couldn't go to medical school now. We share resource power. So what? You mean he's going to stay home? No way. I did arrangements, connection, and he got pharmacy. The guy got first class from pharmacy. He came to me and said, the only thing I want you to do is just to come to my graduation, Banamo America. But in the gown, came to my house to say thank you to me. So this boy and a Jay Randolph, who will succeed in life? <laughs> and as simple as that. <laughs> what do you say? Oh, no, My money, you, why you of fidelity bank? No. They will all listen. Me, me, I don't lie. Ni ma mi no ton koko koko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My tension, yeah, my tension. As you say, emotions now cause work. Okay, horrible. Yeah, ni ma bi ya. I know, but, I know. Me, me, you know, just uh, oh, okay. I put it behind me. Oh, because okay, now the bias is real. Now, yeah, we're moving on. Honorable, um, let me find out from you. You've you you mentioned yesterday that in the, the next elections you will step aside. Yeah. And then give way for other people to come in. I mean, Even I wanted to do it this year. But But do you intend on migrating to any political office uh, aside, you know, being a member of parliament? No, no. Uh, politics is enough for me because, you know, let me tell you, you know, honesty, the way I have planned my life, mm -hmm. if not politics, a lot of people cannot even get close. True. A lot of people cannot even get close. But because of politics, I think Matthew 24, 8 or so, it says anybody who wants to be a leader, 
must first be a servant mm -hmm. of the people. That is why I go so low to deal with people. And I also believe, I have a philosophy that, I say, any leader who is not criticized by his people means he's not doing something right. Mm. So I expect criticisms in any, you know, that I do. Based on what you just said, criticism bit, you know, let's say you leave office and uh, a year after somebody else uh, assumes office right. in your constituency. Right. No, I'll people. criticize you. I'll call okay. you first. Okay. And tell you. This is the way you have to go because 24 years experience is not a joke. It's not a joke. I will share that with you. But if I tell you and you still don't get it, well, I will criticize you. Why not? Okay. Honorable, I, I mentioned this earlier on. We had to just put a pause on that because there was a lot to talk about. Farming in Ghana, AM issue, Bako. It's, it's not the youth you speak, the, the people you speak to will tell you, oh, and yeah, assassinate the cry, who quite before Bejina. Basically, and yeah, enticing. As a leader, what do you think the nation should do to make farming a little bit more enticing for the youth to join in? Because um, do you want me to share my experience with you? Be very honest with that. I, do you I, want me to yes. be blunt? Be very blunt. Do you want me to be blunt? Be blunt. I don't care what the minister of Agric would think. From my experience, anybody who wakes up in the morning and pray that God, money hear me, money hear me, money hear me, will go into farming. Hmm. Case closed. I'm sorry. I tell you. And now I give you reasons. We are educated. Now per se we go into farming. You have to be there 24 7. Because the kind of people you are going to deal with in that village, you will think they are not educated, but they think you are stupid for bringing job there. Okay? There are farms. I would did that in Ashanti region, Yabi. Yeah. A Francho Fuanse Kokobing area, 500 acres plantain. Today, as I speak, Okwa, we have fish ponds, yeah, 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 a bit one kilometer stretch, but all abandoned. I did 598 acres of rice farms in my constituency. As I speak, the rice mill is still there, the machine, everything abandoned. We put in um, orange juice processing factory in my constituency. Go and see. People don't want to dedicate their 24 hours to work there or what? Now, listen. The mindset of the people, mm -hmm. the mindset of the people simply tells me that they are not ready. Mm. So if you are telling somebody to go into farming, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. It's disadvantageous to the person because, one, farmers in advanced countries are giving subsidies. Here they don't. They don't. Here they don't. And if you don't have subsidies, it is not very easy to go into farming and succeed. Mm -hmm. So if the government wants the youth to go into farming, their first thing is subsidy in the form of inputs or whatever. But if you are encouraging you to go into farming without subsidies, I'm afraid it won't work. We'll feel. All right. All right. I think that's a good advice for all of us. You know, I think it the work. Yes. The so ministries. when you wake up in the morning and you pray that they already money him yo, already money him yo, and you you leave a cry here to go to your village and farm. No, I want to say, I want to go grave. What do you say? Honorable, yeah, yeah, bro, from Kakra, how is a day, a regular day for Honorable like when you wake up in the morning or plans to say, yeah, no, dear, be PA? A regular day, regular day, yeah, is all about money. Okay. How to succeed, how to create jobs. What do you say? And yeah, day, no, I'm not going to have my dad, I'm going to have my dad, Four, five hundred years, me nine plants and kwa. Bones a mess, sorry, best six. Now me, me mama soon in a shishima. Come me plan is our end. Basic, we are economics. Mm -hmm. I say human wants are many, mm -hmm. but the resources to satisfy are them are scarce. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you have to make a choice. True. That is opportunity, opportunity cost. Abum. <laughs>
my 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 course professor I'm so proud of me. Strong. <laughs> and he, you have so many things you want to do. Uh -huh. But your money, because as I speak, where are we? I have, let me see the location. I have 12 acres here. Mm -hmm. I want to build a hotel. Seacups is mine. Okay. I want to build a hotel. I have 17 acres of motorway. Your best steel plant. What you say? Me call I'm going to a coastal, the third one that I'm building, 13,000 tons. The fourth one that I've paid $1 million. The lady needs uh, $1 million because the papers are ready. Okay. So you, you sleep and all these things will be going through your mind. So to make the right decision, my brother, it's not a joke. But you have to do it mm -hmm. as a human being. You prioritize it. Sometimes. The coasters are not that expensive. Maybe eight million dollars will get me there, and I know I will get my money. But this twelve acres here, the hotel, you're talking about hundred and twenty million, yeah, yeah. hundred and forty million dollars. Oh dear, sir. So it's not easy. The steel plant is about forty-seven million dollars. It's not a joke. I don't have physical cash of hundred and twenty and forty-seven one sixty-seven. Yeah. I don't have the cash there. Maybe assets-wise, yes. And I'm not prepared to dispose of assets to go and build that. I want to work and build it so that those properties I have will be a fallback in case those businesses are envisaged, say, a uh, juicy, uh, you know, do not work. Uh, flourish, yeah. So, and my daily activities are full of plants that are all most of them about 80 percent are not fulfilled because mm -hmm. i dream more than what i more have than you have but in the course of the day do you have time for megan i said do you have time for yourself maybe a, a, a minute honorable are you even on social media or no no you don't have people a are using my name over there but i'm not so the twitter account that i see the instagram no, they're all, not they are all fake they're all fake yeah they're all fake i don't have time hmm. i don't have time but you, you, you listen oh to yes me. And you may, what kind of songs do you like? Yes. 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 Let's start from yeah. What kind of you like hip hop or um, R and B Iglesias Andrew Bacelli. Andrea okay, Italian man. Yes. Wow. So Andrew Bacelli. In my quiet time or when I'm in the car, you know, I would love to listen to Andrew Bacelli, mm. Julio Iglesias. And uh, Kenny Rogers, you know, those things. And you have to be contra partido. Yeah. Uh, double call. Double call, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, and, wow. You know, beautiful, beautiful. You know, those things. And I also me what my boys be having for my sympa. Yeah, me, me say, no, Ghana, me call in a different way. Say, be an honorable Yeshu, a Ufina, or person, the top five artists, a Baho. A Bentitin, you know, first one. First one, Sakodi. Okay, Obede. Second, hey, my young queen and I, Yenny Yaka Cray. Stone Boy. Stone Boy. Mm. Uh, uh, nah, no, I say, oh my, fine. I like those two guys. Oh, but there are no more Shatawale. Shatawale. <laughs> and uh, Kim Promise. Okay. Then uh, make us receive beach you know. <laughs> You call Lavari Beach Hotel Kudidi. Nana medical team in chain. Oh, and now my family, I'm sorry, so much. Yeah, Driani. Don't buy now medical. I'm so sorry. And I'm going to you more Driani. I'm going to say, oh, this is a guy that I like. You now we're very cool. Who we say we're cool near? Now me come medical. I'm going to come miracle. <laughs> And I'm here to say, I'm a miracle. Medica. Now, who do you know? I love you. Who do you know? But, you know, which of the songs do you remember? Okay, well, you know. You say, Bo, Bo, Pedima, who's that? This is a bar. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Um, you take here a short break. Uh, we need to listen to the music. Honorable needs to blow off some steam. We have more questions hey. coming in, but then. Where do you want me? My boy, one day from Tema, my boy, uh, Tisa, okay. 
and I can promise you so, yeah. I think I watched the video. Uh, there was an event, South Korea was there. I yeah. think he went to Make talk. Day. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I all ban an honorable boat. I cut an anote and say, freestyle, freestyle, freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and what doing my normal free story and I say honorable your key. And honorable said cool. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna get back to the questions in a bit. If you have any questions for honorable. My birthday mm -hmm. in social distance, you know me person here surprise me. Oh. Then come invite stone boy ni shatawale. We ain't him say we but we ain't him say we are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. And we will be catching up. They are nice. I'm happy for them. Thumbs up for the team. I really like them. I mean, it's not a hard one. Yeah, I really like the two. They are both good too. You know. Before we get back to the conversation, Honorable, you know what you're saying? We'll be having a master now. I think at the point, okay, I said Kennedy, the Japan's one master. Please, who is your master? Budini, my master. Oh, you're your master. Okay. Confirm. Me, I recap you. Honorable, I have a special surprise for you. Um, I think, sir, you mentioned five artists as your favorite artists in Ghana. Now, one of them happens to be listening to the show now, and I say, oh, person who didn't come, okay, crazy. Me, body, me, body, me, Jana, mano, akasa, 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 be huni pakro. Let me move on to my next question, honorable. Now, since you love music so much, would you at any point venture into the music business in Ghana? Cause industry, you scan him. Who is Kaka Kabesha that side now, Mayana? I don't know what you mean by that. Say Maybe setting up a record label. Setting a record artist. label up. Record? Yes. Uh, really? Uh, no? Uh, individual artist there, I can help. You can help? Yeah, but uh, he, um, Anna, I was experienced. Mm -hmm. Me offer. And okay. a large key from both. Yes. Okay. And now, the boss said, "Me yet, he no old man." When I started, you know, every day, yeah, baby, I know they throw me so many names. I mean, I can't do that. Many other, you say, "Indeed, me am here in an amazing man." Say, "Onu angaza onkoi." The I say, "A whole year made, but the individual be episode." But up no a good idea. Yeah, I can do that. I'm sure, of course, if your mom business proposal, I be become one. Say, be in the year. This yeah. is how much we can make in the account. How you do it? Yeah, right. I know they can do that. All right. Now we we posted up earlier some Crofum Bisa questions, and a uh, few of them are in. I think we'll just start with uh, one or two of them. So this message in here from Samuel inside Adenta says, a lot of people see politics as a means to riches. What do you say about that? And what is your advice for Ghana's youth who see politics as a money making venture? Um, Obia, Obe, who politics as a money making venture, be in the long run when him be I have the opinion, said there be Obi or Babam, who I was so boy, I mean, I'm a person called contesting me. We be so first, oh, intention, oh, Juma, okay. Now, one of the poorest businesses and our ventures that we can go in, especially politics, MP. I say this because say we are MP now in your man of straw. Yeah, yeah. Or whoever the of parliament and in no time you lose favor with your people. Because mm. demands are yeah, so high on MPs and politicians say or more air criticizing politicians now. Our attitude and behaviors make politicians corrupt. Who mm. make the example we say? The only part I know my son lie, I will be feeling. Don't be free if I'm not working. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have my own business, and it is not different from me. A lot of MPs, okay, that is what they also go through. What do you say? Inti, so who a man of substance? Who knew business? Pa now say, oh, koye, politician. When him beguase, when him beguase, because the rush. To make the money, maybe I'm a bomb history at your own. So, who named me a Uber Fuse MP and a Mamiska? What do you say? It don't so pursue a MP because one who can a Japan say, Wait, MP, yeah, you think he's doing well, but and you're good, ain't he? Wow, by what green say, oh, they oh, yeah, oh, co politics when you scan. When in Beguas, 
na emom sa ubo ubra ye na wa odisari sa ubeko na akoboa you miss a lot of temptations obi antimi influence you and you can be a good excellent politician politician but if you don't have your own business if you are not yourself now see by virtue of where you come from why eh um you to organize our why eh why why you could be mp only a you may be other but we go through the ranks and you will fuse also the mp only pass on when him be grass you fail yeah okay we're going to go to the next question in a bit but i think we have the surprise on the line hello hello big man Hold on, hold on, hold on. Me patch all. Obi person no work can see. so honorable. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, big man. Me patch all. Kasa honorable to you, why? Oh, honorable Mister Kennedy, Japan. Patch all here. Odoba medical here, Michiao. Major so. Patch all here, Bibi Aboko. Aboko, Aboko. Adare Yeshia Hora. Oh, sorry, sir. We caught you doing it. I'm a catcher. I'm a miracle. Medical, I'm a miracle. Oh, you say, you say, let me who send it. I said, only family and I'm in to know what I'm going to do. We've had your people who did just medical and that in general. Was it not a miracle that he was in a miracle? Oh, daddy, when you have to say, no, Casa, I know. First of all, we've got to say, any of you know, any papa, I will hear my auntie, the Sufo, I mean, Shrao, any gun of mine, na. More fans be be watching for you. I don't move body, Papa. Into the work and the thing that we do. For so near to my power, oh yeah. Behind the scenes, Messi out near the come off for be a what's he doing? Come on, Matt. I miss you. But we feel him the hard way now with someone like that. Thank you so much. From you know our guests, I might do just two or twenty Arabia sort of. Now this question in here is coming in from okay, uh, okay. Selassie Bright, yes, Selassie Bright is his name. Um, it says it was reported by okay, it was reported that honorable honorable donated three thousand to thirty, including a hundred bags, gloves, and hand sanitizers, uh, face mask. To help fight COVID-19, the cost of these donations exceed two million or even three million. Um, what informed your decision to donate over two million Ghana cities worth of PPEs to help fight COVID-19? Okay, or the about the, let me give you the exact figures. Mm -hmm. In my three thousand protective clothing, that mm -hmm. is two thousand Ministry of Health and I'm the thousand core national security. Okay. In my hundred thousand gloves, mm -hmm. and at the first time in my hundred thousand marks. I see, you know, maybe 10,000 max, and uh, I think 40,000 gloves, mm -hmm. plus 250 beds, and uh, 100 hand sanitizer gallons, mm -hmm. and I'm the core national security. But health, you know, my 200 beds, 100,000 gloves, 100,000 max, and 100 gallons of hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. And now, besides CRA, another 200,000 marks. So in all, so far, mama, 350,000 marks, mm -hmm. 100,000 gloves, 450 beds, and a 3,000 protective clothing. Wow. And now, you know, hand sanitizer, I think they're 500 or 600 gallons. And I'm winning in every wow. Yes. Why I'm doing that, they say, we depend on government for assistance mm -hmm. too much. <clears throat> now, Bibi Eniwa, a bank, kwa ya, utumi, a yama, a son, ubiasu. He said, Ankran Kranwa, Yami Atom, Semso, Boa, Metisi, and then, what you are wasting my year, four four thousand five hundred, wasting mama one million dollars, wasting mama say. Those white men are no different from us. Mm -hmm. We should take our destiny into our oh, own man. hands. We should not always wait for a white man to come and help you. That's very insulting. Mm -hmm. So I say, I say, well, in my own small way, and I calculate them say seven hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. In me, a baby BNA, we can still help. And mm -hmm. is around four million. Before you say, oh man, papa. 
nyamie shira me now me inform mo kura ma me yesa wo hwe nya ewiase saa yare ketoa ye hu nanim na a displace will be an the world doesn't make sense to me anymore mm -hmm. to hold on to what i have that is why i also decided to say look let me also make a contribution mm -hmm. to the nation a bia one max will save somebody from yes. infection yes a bia one bed e benya obi a nanka yare na to wo nya baby mfaren to edna to nti i'm just doing my bit as a citizen and i wanted to take the lead for Ghanaians to see say we are created as human beings your god's image mm -hmm. and therefore we should do things as human beings mm -hmm. are we are the independent yes we are not dependent on the white man for everything that is why i decided to do that all right thank you very much now i realized that you spoke about hard work you spoke about honesty family and all that but you never touched on friends do you have friends at all oh uh, yeah i have friends what advice would you give upcoming uh, you know i have friends people um you see we live in a society whether you like it or not you have friends mm -hmm. But most of our friends, a bit of a conditional, or situation a woman ti, and a wafa unyongo. If the situation is no more, they will not even come close to you. Odi ama asamuto, enu na abe hum enamfu awo. And what I will tell the youth, and he said, you should try, you should have friends because we nipa. But limit the number of friends you have. And I'm for now, so they call trouble. Mudebia, yes, yes, say what's some way of ye, Unyonku, Nim, and why auntie now would know. And why, auntie, we are nipa, you need friends. We are some advice. One to me, I'm Chirawa, me and Chiru, me and one, Kabi and Chirawa. When we are, you make a wrong decision. So it's important that we have friends, but choose them well. Show Musuman. Study everybody before you align yourself. And now say, what can we do more as a match room? Because a lot of friends, you know, they are opportunists. Mm -hmm. They just want to make something out of you. I've gone through that. I want you to know, and I'm home in young Kufua, or Mupemasem. Now you don't believe it, say, I want to know, say, did you pay me to know what I can want to know? You'll be shocked. Say, Nipa Simesia. Now, when you two said today, sir, now I've been a only trip. But you, if you have clear conscience, you don't plan evil against anybody. Who can ask somebody pay pay now? Kwa the bia nyango ponso ebe show no nyam. If we still have friends, we need friends. I have friends, but I'm extra careful because they say the yuzo MPP or power. So can a Japan? Hey, be a president, penasem. Hey, be a minister, we penasem. In the empire of Hong Kong, Bisa Hose, Emra Wundi Power, were these people your friends? In their conditionally opportunistic attitude, in the young men and women listening to me, Emma, friends, and also my DBR competition by you, we want to keep up with the Joneses. What I mean by keeping up with the Joneses, and they say, Oh, can I Japan will wait? Mensu Menyebi, I was saying, Yebi, any means necessary. How long I have planned and saved towards buying that particular egg. You make a lot of mistakes. Mm. Buy your time. Plan towards every decision you want to make. And you will succeed. But you hasty decision. Area competition. You make a lot of mistakes. Mm. On the last two questions, this one in here is coming in from Kobe Chase, a blogger says, uh, the Germany USA had a better economy to achieve a lot when you put in the hard work. It's a different situation here in Ghana. How can we also achieve a lot in our bad economy? Well, highlight a bad economy now. Hold yeah. <laughs> I'm talking as a businessman. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking as a politician. Okay. As a politician, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. But as a businessman, the question that he has asked, and he said, listen carefully. 
In a society with a bunch of fools, mm -hmm. the few wise men succeed and carry the fools along. Mm. In a society with a bunch of fools, the wise ones, the few wise men succeed and carry the fools along. So be among the few wise, wise men. People. And you will see, say, whatever the situation, you will rise to the occasion. Life is not going to be easy. They say, Although my capital came from America, now I give back. Come in, come American, come in, come here, come in, come here, 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 come Returns on investment in Ghana is higher than exactly US ni Europe. No? But you should venture into right there. If you say the youth, I can give you few a year, I'm not supposed to, but I'll give it to you. A friend of mine wanted to sell the apartment to me for eleven million. Then I asked him how much will be the returns in a year if I spend a year. Was it 600,000? 600,000 after taxes, many are saying, was it 300,000? So 300,000 times 10 is 3 million. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take me over 30 years to make that money back. To make that money. Now listen, decisions that you take. If the 11 million dollars mm -hmm. can build about 12 13 000 tons of coastal mm. and 12 000, 12 000 tons or 13 000 tons of coastal with the 11 million dollars a month after taxes i will make hundred and eighty thousand dollars from rent so how many years and i'm the how many years do the mathematics no more than seven years. Mm -hmm. So why would I? It's a flash ship. Mm -hmm. You see Villagio. Yeah, you see we say, Masa, I just will be a boy in suit. Now my be jeans. Everybody will think so be a wash a suit, you know, where a crutching in on the whisker. It is not so. How many times do you see brigades wearing a Another example is, and might be bankers be bass or more pay. Ken City account. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, but me am my co-store. I say, oh, me pay Ken City. Then I started laughing. <laughs> I'm saying, do you know how much comes to the co-store compared to way that this media thing is flash. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is not where I make my money. See, can I get a free baby? Good. Ebi na machero no. So me renting one cost or a three taxes in we are. What comes to me is ninety thousand dollars from one. So the ninety thousand dollars after taxes will give me one million eighty thousand dollars. Right there sitting in the bank, fidelity. The other one gives me eighty five thousand dollars, and also in a year gives one million twenty. But who can two no bomb one? And about eleven million dollars. Exactly. So if I'm going to spend eleven million dollars to buy property or cantonments, yes, oh, can I Japan? A war apartment or cantonments. When you see the apartment, it's so beautiful. So you think that there is money. When you come to my coastal, we do a kwa wanyi nyi nyi tuna wanyi spray pain 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 umu. As one is going free back. That's it. So it goes back to making informed decisions. Precisely. And a determination. And you what you say? And then in the year I will start a business here, I will say, we know seeker. You won't. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, you will not look at the end of the year. That is how it is. Obi Awa, and now I'm going to tell you, you say, you have to be a good person. You have to be a good person. Why be an officer or not? That gives me, my honesty gives me an edge over the dishonest person. And the Ghana, the end of the year, but you have to a gumano kakra kakra na usevu. Another strategy. Don't expand when you are doing business. 
if you can don't expand your business outside your premises now we'll start here you, know. you will do the expansion one say be a have more yini now what we account we go now i expand it so that you can supervise and see every business that is going on if you set up happy fm here uh yfm here happy fm here command fm here oh akwano uska and go for near humanity but say who be a human bakuni next time what me be him sir you want a bigger place you move to a bigger place so that one casa you you move the entire business to a yes area. to a bigger place okay that is expansion i will encourage you to do okay because they said me want i chef him i chef him kumasi but if you want to enter your mocha come boys in the group want to make a tree of seventy thousand back on office can another also for busy god by me you refer me on the end and i'm missing to your mocha work one casa a year gumano let you know let you know who can and also means i'm going for a man if i'm sick no way i won't do it man pray one with dishonesty mm -hmm. but only people are where we are me be as on who who know what never about on ends the sign and the returns on investment say oh yeah you know how do we need to form who monitor what they are you can do it better than say oh 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 honorable workers i thank you so much we are i'm i'm, I'm very touched with all the things that you've spoken about um two questions be her it's staring at me <laughs> Oh, but yeah, feel free, call. feel free, you need problem. <laughs> this message is coming in from Lukman. Lukman says, you recently revealed to state authorities with respect to the non-payment of vehicle duties by Pastor Badu Kobi. What motivated you to do that and what is your advice to the youth of Ghana who see driving luxurious cars and yet to do everything, whether right or wrong, to one? And the second one from him, same person says, Honorable Hasso, been him reached out to you to apologize or wave the white handkerchief in the ongoing revelations? Yeah, let me answer you. First one. Mm -hmm. Bedu Kubi. Let me watch it, the program. Constantly insulting the Kufuado. Ah, who is this guy? Now nah, are the Kufuado or anything? I so I started digging him to know who he is. Mm -hmm. And I got somebody here, or you close, or cost or any be. I saw no say your cars won't find a person to her. Or the two or see is care woman in a go. Oh, we know. See, can I? Why you go on an hour? But you be the ushers in Bessessa. No, say how? Memphis. Or no, we argument in a or my between a sea of one thing. So he started giving me the information. Then other people are one of your stolen cars. No, he been got panic and came to me. Say, I'm part saying he say, you quite sure chances number. Ha, Saka will want to your car is a whole lot of. A custom for a course, second one, no me mistake. Most of the cars in your own triad. The panic to me, change actually me what to do and get the fake engine numbers. Oh, my dear, a man, you know, oh, yes, and in a no, no, the way I was it, dear, cook for what term because my Mahama time he had it so easy or pretend is our Mahama sofu now. Oh, you soon are going to be a Mahama or you soon because. Onya bo mahama na na obi asuru obi asuru o mo awa bu o mo kwase age o mo nyoma oba mx o tumi sign it down papers the man a whole lot of the cars for o mo ko fa ni nyina fia fia nya she said nasty things have gone on o ti ase so i picked on him when i saw say ah no no kura o ka say say o nya genu yeah i was so for one no din 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 say o to stolen cars and I'm in this year. But we're smart. But me and I know. But we're reaching out to you personally. Sir. Well, he yeah. sent a very good friend of mine okay. to say so. Or Pachoni and did that the only two speaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next three. Hey. Because all the main person, you see, Ghana phone Timasi. Oh, so be Pachoni. Yeah, we are saying also. No matter how strong you are, also to me and the Pabia, oh, coach you are, to me, a can't boldly, a chill. So when you say any panibia, you are not a human being. And he and your wife gonna say, Would you be a casam chara won't ye? Or fair for be beating me a beca. Or say, Well, my man condition is a go. In fact, honestly, me and my delay. 
He wanted to come to me, cross him in China, crying over fast over Perku for a ducho. But me have not had time. Okay. Oh, they are saying, your hair, no. So there are no problem. Sorry. Obinim made a mistake. I was making reference to Obama or Sereno or a foreigner be. Or see, Makoya oil be say, coronavirus, Obinia forty dollars. Yes. Now, Jesse, how can you even embarrass yourself like that? So that, that's where it started from. That is where he started. Okay. I was referring to girl no video na no why your S3 obini no. Say you ridicule yourself by making such statements in here. But this was tough. And then Jimmy was up and said, "Yes, I say, me no, you be dealing with me spiritually. Deal with me physically before spiritually because spiritually, me me stronger than you because I do good things more than you. Who are evil?" So your evil cannot conquer me. In the end, the onion is straight. Oya mesa baby. Oya mesa ba. But has he apologized? He has no, not reached out whatsoever. No, I don't want to. I don't want his apology. Mm. I don't. Okay. Maybe I may TV, social media, and no. Aye, won't to me. Any abroye, any ba min chainse. Omo sremiya minya butreniye. And I'm saying, I will ban or no, no, one in a casa now, bam, Jose. No, I'm so woman in a casa. Say, fine. Ah, every one on one casa cotton, casse, on the on so be as or me patcho. Give me fra, bro, yeah, I'm catching the what what is what happened in the end. Oh, yeah, I'm so okay. And Jerry Biam, no, Sabazo, and they were throwing tower and you need me up penny, whatever. Then, need it. And so did the other shoe. Now, I try to get a question to the mom. When the information I have okay. on Obinim, I am a young man. And there was no way I am born in the crowd, I didn't tell my mother. Because I am a young man, I will go through that. I will tell my mother, 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 I will tell my house maid, I will tell my mother. What do you say? You are a human being. And the Nami was sympathy for her until she stupidly came on a year of a year video. Oh, video. Eka said, I'm not working in Japan. She was so sarcastic. And you are what we need. And yet, deep room. Say, oh boy, Gamay. Me say, my man 19. My man, we are 22. Oh boy, Gamay. And I will, my 19. Now, sad dear Wimpo. We eat it. What you want? I did win Pumu, which is it? Na Oma nineteen, a ensue, and I do. Here, I tell you, I'm not sure now, nor the answer, or corner cabba, sorry. That ugly, who didn't say, I'm a young man, so I want no crowd. Apologies. Very ugly. No, 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I mean, it's been an experience. Um, we've learned so much. And uh, before we wrap up, uh, any final words, anything you'd like to add? Anything you think Ghanaians should know? Piece yeah. of advice for I want, people. I want the youth to take their destiny into your own hands. Mm. Their own hands. And I also want them to know that the life is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful, there are going to be challenges. But rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. You have to be determined. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Challenge yourself. Turn your misfortunes to be fortunate. Mm -hmm. hey. say, all the mistakes you make, you can turn them around. Mm -hmm. It's a lesson to you. They, you will not repeat the mistakes when you solve the problems. No. Indeed, I am encouraging every youth in this country to take his destiny into his own hands. And sky is the limit. Yes. Don't settle for less. The be out try say we are juma oh and a boy we do a two noon and on kwan or pack as a semi dream big, talk yes. big and do things big. God bless you. Part of the people. Thank you so much, honorable. This is YFM. Y.